artificial intelligence and chatbots is rapidly evolving. But one significant gap that has emerged has been the ability to analyse local documents. Now, uploading documents to an online chatbot presents its challenges due to privacy concerns. Of course, so it's certainly not something necessarily to be encouraged. But this gap has now been addressed with the arrival of a program called GPT for All. Now, it's an innovative platform that can be installed on consumer grade computers. So your little PC or laptop at home, which enables AI processing on regular CPUs. Although I would tend to recommend a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now as an open source model, GPT for All allows users to download and implement various models, including the highly regarded Mistral model, whose latest model, by the way, Mr. Large, is currently ranked as second to GPT-4. Simply going to the website for GPT-4 All, which you can see on the screen at the moment, you'll see that it can be downloaded for Windows, Mac or Linux. And if you go through the page, it will tell you what its capabilities are and give you a bit of an idea there. Installation instructions and what it will do. And then it will also display the number of models that are available for download and use on the platform. It's worth noting that some of these models cannot be used commercially too. So it'll have here whether it's got license for commercial use. If we go up the top here, we'll have a look here. So the Mistral 7B is licensed for commercial use. Orca cannot be used commercially, nor can this one. So make sure that you're using one that can be used commercially if you are going to use it for commercial purposes. Once you download the program, it's simply a matter of installing it as normal and then we'll have a look at what we can do with it. So configuration is all important here and you can see that I have the GPT-4 application now showing on the screen. I've already got it set there as Mistral Instruct, but this will come with nothing downloaded in the application once you set it up. And the first thing you will need to do is go to the downloads area on the, from the left hand side here and then you'll have to have a look at which models that you wish to download. So I have downloaded Mistral Open Orca, I've got, I wouldn't bother with 3.5 Turbo at all, I've got Mistral Instruct and the other one which is particularly important if you're going to be using it for having a look at your local documents, is one called BERT. Here it is down here, SBERT. So this one works with the local docs text embedding model. And so you do need to have that installed for the local docs to work. So let's exit that. And then we'll go back here. You can select, once you've downloaded several models, you can then select which model you want to use when you're running GPT for all. Okay, so, and it will load that model. In the, uh, the settings, uh, it will tell again which model that you're using, Mistral Instruct, and allow you to do that. And there's also provision for uh, system prompts and prompt templates. Now, I haven't been able to find any examples online at this stage about what to use there. So that is something to be worked on. But at this stage, I have really just said, to write its reasoning for each step and I also wanted to provide the sources of its information particularly when it's coming from my local documents so that I know uh, what context it is referring to. So that's the model. Right? Application uh, is just your application settings and local docs will be where you want to set up your local document collections. So all you need to do here you must name the collection I've been caught a couple of times putting in the folder path without the name and then it won't add it. So yeah, you've got to put a name in there and then the folder path and you can browse across your computer to find which particular folders that you want to add. So that's that's pretty easy. So as you can see here, I've actually installed the Obsidian help files, which are publicly available on GitHub. And I've done that simply for the purposes of this video and demonstration. This is my vault, my Obsidian vault. And uh, this is the path to my Zotero attachments, the PDFs. I store them in a separate directory. I don't store mine within Zotero itself. 
So they're all my PDFs and I've got here to show references. Okay, let's have a look at how this all works. Now, the first thing when you open GPT for all is that you will need to choose the model that you wish to work with. I have opened it blank as if I'd be starting it up at this stage. And the first thing to do is choose the model. So we'll click on the drop down list here and we'll use Mistral Instruct. So I might pause the video while it's going through its load. All right, well, now that Mistral Instruct has been loaded, the first thing that we need to do if we're going to access our local documents is go over here to this hard disk icon that looks a bit like a hamburger, click it on, and then it will pull up the list of the directories or folders that you have already set up for exploration with GPT for all. In this case, we're just going to click on Obsidian Help because that's the only directory or folder we're actually going to be interrogating. And we'll just close that now. And then down here in Send a Message, we're simply going to ask how we obtain community plugin for Obsidian. And uh, so it's searching the local docs, Obsidian Help, so we know that it's going to the right area. And here it comes back providing us with the information about what we need to do in order to select community plugins. It's giving us the two files that it has sourced for that information and the context. You can click on it here and it will show you what it has collected from within the documents. So that is how easy it is to interrogate a local folder. So if we refresh that, clear the screen, now we're going to try a second query. So how do I set up links between files in my Obsidian Vault? It's searching the local docs again. And here it comes back with the response about how I would set up those links. It's giving me an example in Markdown, how to save the file, more information here. And then it's giving me three files in this case where it has sourced that information. I'm just doing a bit of an edit to the video now because of the introduction of Llama 3. I have installed it, uh, as you can see here up in the top, and I've also indexed all of my Zotero PDS. So what I thought I'd do is a uh, live demo of Llama 3 running on the Zotero PDF. So I'm going to select that there. And if I go down here into my queries, I'm just going to ask Llama3 about what the value of community leadership training in rural Australia. And let's see what it comes up with. So it's processing it now. I've cut a fair bit of this out now while the model was generating the reply because of the time it took. However, I noticed that it hasn't provided me with any references there. So I'm going to have to go and have a look and find out why that is. And we'll go into the settings, show references. That is clicked. Okay, so it hasn't shown any particular references. So all I can assume here is that it has essentially provided a summary of the documents that it has located in the Zotero PDFs. Looking at most of this response, obviously, they're pretty much on the money, uh, but it would have been nice to be able to get the references as well. So I think I will continue to keep playing with this and see if I can generate that because if it's sourced it from several papers, I would like to particularly see it, and maybe I'm asking too much here, but I would really like to see where it has reference empowerment here, similar to what Perplexity does where it indicates, you know, one, two, and three or something of that nature and then ties it back in to a particular item. Let's see if we can have a look at perplexity for a moment. So here's an example in perplexity. I've asked about GPT-4 or locally. Uh, does it leave any data on the computer? So I've, I've checked this. And as you can see here, it's got references within the document, which will lead me straight to the source. And you can see the actual link down in the bottom in the status bar of my browser. So I'd love to see that in GPT for all, uh, but it's not there yet. And perhaps it'll be a future edition. And I'm sure it will be very useful when that occurs. So back to the original video. 
I hope this brief demonstration has given you a bit of an indication about the power that GPT for all could offer you with your local documents and folders. Now the documentation around the application is somewhat limited at the moment. So initial exploration would suggest that there is a world of possibilities for academic research and personal knowledge management here within this program by way of being able to manage your PDFs, interrogate personal knowledge management systems such as the Obsidian Vaults. GPT for all offers a preliminary step towards the democratization of GPT models as well. So in conclusion, GPT for all is a powerful tool for local document analysis. It offers enhanced privacy, great security, and the potential for future developments. By harnessing the power of AI on consumer grade computers, GPT for All opens up new possibilities for academic research and personal knowledge management. So go and do some exploration and enjoy. Cheers.